on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Three members of the band Pussy Riot have spent the last six months in prison for staging a protest against Russian leader Vladimir Putin inside an Orthodox cathedral. On Friday, the group was awarded the Lenin Ono Peace Award by the artist and activist Yoko Ono. I thank Pussy Riot for standing firmly in their belief for freedom of expression and making all women of the world proud to be women. And I am proud. Each um, injustice like this is very important. And uh, there are many, many activists in this world now, and they're fighting for each one of them. And I'm fighting for many, many uh, injustice, uh, a situation of injustice. On Thursday, Pussy Riot also received a boost from the Burmese pro-democracy leader Aung San Suu Kyi, who's currently on her first visit to the United States in more than three decades. I don't see why people shouldn't sing whatever it is that they want to sing. And there's nothing wrong with singing. I, I, I think the only reason why people should not sing is if what they are saying is deliberately insulting or if they sing terribly. <laughs> That would be the best reason for not singing at all. <laughs> so I would like the whole group to be released as soon as possible. Aung San Suu Kyi herself was jailed for years. In August, the three jailed members of Pussy Riot were sentenced to two years in prison for hooliganism after a judge rejected the argument their act was a form of political protest. Speaking from inside a glass cage in the courtroom, jailed Pussy Riot member Maria Ayakhina condemned Putin's administration. When we talk about Putin, we have in mind first and foremost not Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin, but Putin the system that he himself created. The power vertical, where all control is carried out effectively by one person, and that power vertical is uninterested, completely uninterested in the opinion of the masses. And what worries me most of all is that the opinion of the younger generations is not taken into consideration. We believe that the ineffectiveness of this administration is evident in practically everything. For more on the fate of Pussy Riot, we're joined now by two guests here in New York. Piotr Versloff is the husband of jailed Pussy Riot member Nadia Tolokonakova. She is a, he is a, also a performance artist and a member of the art group Voina. We're also joined by Elisa Abertsova. Uh, she's a lawyer's assistant with Pussy Riot's legal team. You may remember we spoke to her in a cafe in Moscow just after the verdict came down. And we welcome you both to Democracy Now! Her talk about coming to the United States, to New York, and receiving the Lenin Ono Prize, named for John Lennon, Yoko Ono's uh, late husband. Well, receiving this prize has been very emotional, as um, for any person who has been doing political activism and art for some time. Obviously, Yoko Ono is a very important symbol. What she has uh, championed and done since the 60s and the 70s, that's obviously like a very strong image with uh, the things she has done with her late husband, uh, John Lennon. And basically, whenever anyone thinks of political activism on a certain side, you will definitely see images of Yoko and John protesting in the 60s and the 70s. So since she's a very important part of the history of political activism, it's a great honor to receive the award from her. Mm. And you are here with your four-year-old daughter? Yes, we're here together with Gera, and basically she has been uh, meeting all these people, meeting people in D.C., and we went to D.C. before that, and yes, she formally received the award from Yoko as well. Mm -hmm. And she's four, so when did she, when was she last with Nadja, when Nadja was free? Uh, when not, well, basically, not he was arrested in March, exactly six months ago. So before that, it has been six months since they uh, spoke and kind of sh shook, hugged and shook hands before Nadia was arrested. The last time she got to see her mom was on Monday, was uh, this past Monday, exactly a week ago, when uh, Gilbert for the first time went to prison and got to see Nadia through the glass and the the spoke uh, with each other on the telephone in the prison, inside the little prison room where people usually have dates. Mm. What happened uh, to Nadja and the other members of Pussy Riot? Explain exactly what they did and how they were arrested and what the sentence means. So uh, basically the girl, what happened, the girls did this 49-second uh, performance inside Cathedral of Christ the Savior called uh, 
the punk prayer, Mother Virgin Mary, please redeem us of Satan. And uh, so it was basically uh, what they did inside the cathedral inside the cathedral was a set for filming and the creation of a musical clip, which was later published on the internet basically the next day and went viral and got a huge following well, because millions of Russians thought that this was basically precisely the idea that has to be put to people's minds right now. So, uh, and uh, a week later, uh, I went to see Nadia and around 20 or 25 FSB officers just like was, were jumping out of nowhere and apprehended us. We were put to the ground, guns stuck to our heads, and then we were taken to interrogation. And the same thing happened with other two girls. Huh. Um, in her closing statement at the trial last month, Pussy Riot member Katya Semtsevich talked about the connection between church and state in Russia and described the significance of Christ the Savior Cathedral, where the Pussy Riot protest took place. During the closing statement, the defendant is expected to repent or express regret for her deeds or to enumerate attenuating circumstances. In my case, as in the case of my colleagues in the group, this is completely unnecessary. Instead, I want to express my views about the causes of what has happened with us. The fact that Christ the Savior Cathedral had become a significant symbol in the political strategy of our powers that be was already clear to many thinking people when Vladimir Putin's former KGB colleague, Kirill Gun took over as head of the Russian Orthodox Church. After this happened, Christ the Savior Cathedral began to be used openly as a flashy setting for the politics of the security services, which are the main source of power in Russia. That was jailed Pussy Riot member Katya Samosevich. Uh, the scene in the courtroom, Piotr, with the glass cage that um, your partner, your wife, and the other uh, two women were in? Well, uh, first of all, this cage was built for a uh, Russian uh, billionaire, Mikhail Khodorkovsky, who was basically the first um, kind of major enemy of Putin. And uh, this cage was built after he won a case against Russia uh, that said that you cannot have people in uh, metal cages, you must have them in glass cages. So basically, they've been sitting in this glass cage and enduring this trial and making these powerful political speeches. And Putin, what he has to say about these young women? Putin uh, gave several comments on the case, which was very surprising, because usually he would not touch such a sensitive issue of people getting sent to prison for political reasons. And, well, basically, he, uh, he did not uh, directly say much, but he went on to elaborate how uh, these girls have been doing some type of strange political art for years. He went on to describe in an interview he gave a week ago several works done by Voina Group, which was, well, quite an event. And, uh, That's well, your group. Yes. And basically, uh, he was making a point that these people are doing some very horrible uh, and strange things that are not uh, well understood by common Russian people. So it's basically okay for them to be sent to jail. What does your group do, Voina? Well, Voina group, it's uh, basically it's somehow uh, similar to Pussy Riot in the sense that it's also uh, we do art, action art, which touches on political uh, topics, and uh, well, we choose bright topics and bright formal methods, wh which uh, we which we see as uh, crucial to illustrating the problems which are key to Russia at a given point. I wanted to bring uh, Lisa Avrostova into the conversation. Lisa, you were in the courtroom. You're a translator for the lawyers. Uh, talk about the significance of this case in Russia. Well, uh, I think that uh, this case actually showed uh, that we we do not have any legal system in Russia. The trial does not work. Uh, unfortunately, we still live under telephone justice, and all the decisions were made by uh, Kremlin, uh, by Putin, and uh, people who are close to him. So, Although uh, Putin says he doesn't want them to have uh, such a harsh sentence. Oh, you know, uh, I think we all uh, should not uh, think a lot of about what he says, about what Medvedev actually says, because. Uh, um, these statements are not for people in Russia. They are for the worldwide society. And actually, Putin just wants to make the society to, to make it more calm, 
you know, just to stop people talking about Pussy Riot. And the only thing he's wanting, just make people forget about Pussy Riot, about the girls, because uh, Pussy Riot case actually showed how weak Putin's authoritarian system is. It doesn't matter that the girls are sentenced for two years. The main thing that uh, all worldwide society in the US, in Europe and in any other countries uh, just seen that there is no democracy in Russia, that people still live uh, in authoritarian country. The lawyers um, that you work for, that you assessed uh, for Pussy Riot, they themselves are being threatened? Yes. Two of uh, three lawyers, Mark Fagan and Violetta Volkova, were called for interrogation in the investigation committee. And um, uh, this happened because of the 6th May case. It is the day where, uh, where in Moscow a big protest rally happened. Uh, Mark was already been on the uh, in, uh, interrogation, and uh, they tried to know if he if he knew any uh, people who uh, made fundraising for the protest rally. Uh, he showed they showed him uh, the video. He was on the stage. He was trying to call people uh, for their for taking part uh, in um, striking. There's an upcoming hearing on October 1st. Yes. What's the significance of this? Well, uh, we think that probably uh, they will reduce the sentence for maybe half a year, but not more. And after that, girls will be sent to the penal colony, and uh, we think that uh, they probably will be sent to three different penal colonies, which are very far from Moscow, and uh, it will be quite complicated to visit them every day. Unfortunately, it is allowed to visit them for their close relatives only for three uh, short visits during the year and three long visits. Pyotr, the significance of where they're being sent and uh, talk about the penal colony. Well, yes, uh, people in the, in the West have basically quite clearly have understood that the girls are being sent to the Stalinist era styled colonies, right? So the prison system in Russia really did not change much since the Gulag days. It was built after Second World War. It was built for uh, the massive amounts of prisoners that Stalin was sending to these prisons. So and in terms of architecture and behavior of prison authorities and the amenities in the prison, things have stayed the same for the last 50, 60 years. So basically, for example, Nadia is being sent to this prison in uh, a region in Mordovia, supposedly. And well, it's a notorious area in central Russia, basically most famous for its gulag prisons. So uh, it must be fun be going to the gulag, if you can put it that way. <laughs> I wanted uh, to read, um, to bring you uh, a guest we had on our show just after the verdict was handed down. Democracy Now! interviewed J.D. Sampson, a feminist punk musician here in the United States, a member of two bands, Le Tigre and Men. We asked her to read some of the lyrics Pussy Riot performed during their punk prayer inside the church. The song was called Punk Prayer, Virgin Mary Put Putin Away. Virgin Mary, Mother of God, put Putin away, put Putin away, put Putin away. Black robe, golden epaulets, all parishioners crawl to bow. The phantom of liberty is in heaven, gay pride sent to Siberia in chains. The head of the KGB, their chief saint, leads protest presters to prison under escort in order not to offend his holiness. Women must give birth and love. Virgin Mary, Mother of God, become a feminist, become a feminist, become a feminist. J.D. Sampson reading the words. Um, uh, Piotr, what happens now? Uh, and do, does Nadja and the other Pussy Riot members in jail understand what's happening in the outside world around their case, the response? For example, Friday, Aung San Suu Kyi long jailed herself, speaking out for Pussy Riot. Well, the girls in the prison do understand everything that's happening in, in, 
in the world, and um, as we've stated repeatedly, they basically hear every protester and every action done in their support. Uh, well, they have TV connections, the lawyers visit them often, they get newspapers, so basically there is a... How often do you get to see Nadia? I get to see Nadia once every two weeks, usually. That's a lot in Russia, unfortunately. But we have a very good letter connection going on through the lawyers. And uh, yes, the girls do feel that this major international support going on really does help them live through the harsh prison days. It really basically allows them to keep themselves together. And the significance of them wearing the balaclavas uh, over their faces? Uh, this whole idea was brought by the group to uh, make the public focus on their values and ideas, not on their identities, right? Which have basically become the focus of the media right now, since the Balaclavas were, as you can say, taken off by the police. Mm. Well, I want to thank you both for being with us, and congratulations on the um, on the prize, the Lenin. The Lenin Oko, uh, you, the, the Lenin Ono Prize, named for John Lennon and Yoko Ono, that Pussy Riot received last week. You received it for your wife Nadja, uh, Pyotr Veslov, husband of jailed Pussy Riot member Nadja Tolokonokova. Um, he's also a performance artist, and a member of the group Boina, and also thanks so much to Elisa Rosova, uh, who is a lawyer's assistant with Pussy Riot's legal defense team. This is Democracy Now. Democracy now.org, The War and Peace Report. When we come back, Eve Ensler will join us. Stay with us.